Let me know whether it is visible or not. Yes, sir, it is visible. Right, thank you. So, uh, in the group, I have seen there are a lot of participants, right? <laughs> 300 yes, plus participants are there. Yes, sir. So, can I start the lecture or should I wait for... Sir, we can start the lecture. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, so thank you to Bahana College uh, who has organized this very important training program on bioinformatics. So basically institutional biotech hub Bahana College, they were uh, organizers of this uh, training program. So it would have been a uh, rather good experience if it uh, is a physical workshop. But anyway, uh, so COVID has given us a uh, lot of tools, a lot of techniques through which we are now uh, comfortable uh, in up to some extent online also. So uh, I'll start the lecture. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah, I'll request uh, all to mute their microphones and if they want to interrupt me any with any questions in between. <clears throat> they are most welcome. So uh, we'll be going going from the very very uh, basics of computer aided drug discovery. So it's a very vast area, right? So uh, very vast area. It has lot many techniques, tools, and resources are involved. High computational power is required. Okay. So how the entire uh, that scenario is being changed by bioinformatics, that I want to just give a glimpse to you. So one and a half hours is, is basically, it's a CADD is a topic for an entire workshop actually. So uh, whatever we can, we will cover. And I hope that this one and a half hours should be interactive one. It is not like that I am only saying and you are listening. Somebody uh, may interrupt if any question arises in between. Okay. <clears throat> so good morning all. Uh, so uh, in your screen, you can see there is a cup of tea, right? Yes, sir. So which we take, most of us, we prefer to take in the morning, right? So have you uh, thought tea sometime as a medicinal drink or medicinal plant? Maybe most of you have already familiar that tea is basically is a health drink, right? So it contains a lot of polyphenols, those which you term as catechins, epigallocatechin gallet, Easy CZ. Then many other catechins are there in the black tea as well as in the green tea. <clears throat> okay. Then after that, so after this lecture is over, it will be the lunch time, right? 12 30 or something like that. So we take a lot of things in our daily life to survive. Okay. So knowingly and unknowingly, along with the proteins, along with the carbohydrates, along with the vitamins, we take a lot of other medicinal compounds. We consume a lot of other medicinal compounds, which basically keeps us healthy and safe from many diseases. Okay. Now, uh, the today's lecture, I'll be focusing on basically 
the hidden treasure which is there in our medicinal plants what we consume in different forms like in form of tea or in the form of say wholesome lunch or say in the form of different uh, indian spices okay so spice whatever you say uh, it is black pepper piperin comes to our mind right then <clears throat> ginger oil from the ginger curcumin from the turmeric okay like that these medicinal compounds are abundant in these food materials what we consume in our day to day life now uh, the amount in which we require suppose we know that the green tea is good for so many diseases like you can say it is good for the arthritis good for it has got good anti aging properties but have you thought that how much green tea we have to consume in order to get those adequate amount of compounds like suppose easy cg is one of the antioxidant very strong antioxidant available in green tea right so to in order to get that green tea uh, sorry easy cg in the re required amount we need to have many many cups of green tea during the 24 hours cycle and which is not possible right because there are so many other chemicals available phytochemicals available like caffeine is there which can cause gastritis there are other compounds in the medicinal plants which may be having some adverse effect in our metabolic activities so it is not like that that something we are getting from the nature means it if we take it as a food okay but if you want to take it as a medicine the required doses form required amount is very very essential to be remembered so that is why what people are doing that we are searching the required chemical required phytochemical in a particular medicinal plant suppose we know that tulsi is good for say cold and cough but what are the exact compounds which is working for giving us the benefits from where they will come from the phytochemicals so <clears throat> day by day the diseases are increasing right newer and newer diseases are coming so we need drugs <coughs> we need new molecules into the clinic so from where we can get those new molecules definitely nature is the first choice right natural compounds from where we will go we will get abundance is there in the plants in the natural context in the plants the in many bacterial species many fungi species right many medicinal plants medicinal compounds are available so how to how to select those medicinal compounds which are essential for a particular drug so for treating a particular disease say uh, for example we know that some of the medicinal plants are very useful traditionally it is being used say again say particular disease like as i have mentioned about the tulsi or as uh, you can say that aratoda vesica or turmeric or whatever so people are using traditionally so from our 
grandparents, great grandparents from our forefathers. We are getting the legacy that we should take this. If we suffer from, say, indigestion, we should take, say, ginger, right? But now it is time to identify that what exactly what are the compounds that is creating the difference, which are creating the magic for us. Okay. So that what will be the benefit of that? Number one, we can get the right compound in the right amount. Number two, we can ignore the unnecessary compounds, unnecessary pigments or whatever available along with the natural, naturally occurring the active compound or the required would be drug molecule. Means we can nullify, we can remove some of the unnecessary phytochemicals and we can focus more on the actual compound which is required to be developed as a drug. Okay. So why we take the plant-based products? So just, it's a, I'm speaking as a layman. We take plants as a food, right? We take plants as medicines, traditional medicines. We take plants as nutraceuticals. We take plants as functional foods. Okay. Functional food means those plant products are being used in some protein supplements. Right? We can use the plants as intoxicating agents. Many plant products are being used as a intoxicating agent that you know. Tobacco products or plant products. So basically, there are so many big list of materials what we consume that comes from the plants. Size. So traditional medicinal plants are being used for many elements. Why it is necessary? Yes, please. Siva Chetri. Any question? Siva Setri, you has you have raised the hands. Yes, please. Any question? Am I audible? Is there any question? Please unmute yourself and you can ask. Okay. Yes. Only my mistake. He has raised his hands. Okay. So traditionally medicinal plants are being used for treatment of many ailments, right? So all of you, we know. So why it is necessary to know about the specific active compounds, secondary metabolites, etc. present in the plant. So we may not get the adequate amount of active compound as I have mentioned that you may have to take 15-20 cups of green teas per day to get adequate amount of EGCG in your diet, right? Or And secondly, washing away of the 
unwanted compounds. So we can wipe off the unwanted compounds, which are basically not necessary for our body. So that is why, uh, how we can do that? How we can get that exactly what are the molecules present, what are the active molecules present in the plant and <coughs> where it will be useful. So basically the simple answer is the biochemical studies, right? So how we can do that? So you know that uh, we can extract, we can extract the compound in different solvent systems, right? So after extraction of the sol uh, extracting the compounds, we can take the help from the separation techniques like high performance liquid chromatography, thin layer chromatography, HP, TLC, okay, high performance thin layer chromatography. So GC, MS, gas chromatography and mass spectroscopy together we can use. Then paper chromatography. So there are so many separation techniques are available that you already familiar with so generally what we do is gcms and the lcms the most commonly it is being done so if you want to do the analysis of a particular compound particular plant the compounds in a particular plant okay so we'll have to do the proper extraction then we have to send the samples for GCMS as well as LCMS analysis, right? So anybody want to start any work on medicinal plant, they can follow this protocol. So you don't have to have GCMS, LCMS at your lab. There are hundreds of organizations, institutions, labs, which outsource their services. You can outsource your services to those companies, right? So GCMS and LCMS, basically GCMS, it detects the volatile compounds and LCMS for the non-volatile compounds. So in the screen, you can see the different kind of peaks you will get. And from the peaks, these peaks, uh, GCMS spectra can be analyzed and the compounds one after another. This is LCMS spectra. So uh, liquid chromatography and TOF mass analyzer time of flight so ultimately you will get some of the peaks and the peaks are basically these are identified to be some of the active compounds through those internal databases of the software or there are, there are many ways to analyze the GCMS and LCMS spectra and get the compounds identified. Say uh, your uh, GCMS and LCMS uh, result after analysis, you will get the names of the compounds like this. Okay. So you may not get the structure okay but you can get some idea that what is basically the this particular compound is so i'll show you that from here say this is dimethyl fumarate so we can simply uh, go to On database, this is NCBI database. So where there is a database called PopChem Compound. So in the PopChem Compound database, we can take the name identified by your GCMS and LCMS analysis, suppose dimethyl fumarate. Just you 
you can search dimethyl fumarate and you can see the structure and the properties of the dimethyl fumarate here the pop chem compound database kindly note this so i'll show you so there is similar analogous database maintained by embl european molecular biology laboratory which is known as chebi so same compound so dimethyl fumarate can be searched in this database also see this is the compound okay fine so we can use <clears throat> these compounds and we can build up a library of the compounds which are available in this particular plant okay so we have got lot of other properties like one important is canonical smiles and isomeric smiles so these canonical smiles and isomeric smiles this can be used for generating the structures without drawing so there are software available through which we can regenerate the structure and calculate the properties this is one uh, software biovia draw okay uh, prepared by dassel system we can generate the structure regenerate the structure from the smile string what we have copied see fine so we'll do it practically when uh, you do the practical sessions now interesting thing is you can uh, calculate the properties on the go see you can see the properties has been calculated within one click molecular formula weight molecular mass molecular <coughs> sorry exact mass so on and so forth the so which are also available in the this pop chem compound kind of databases so you can see the molecular weight here and molecular weight calculated here exactly the same okay now uh, the thing is see after getting the compounds these are some of the compounds how we can identify from the gcms and lcms result so i repeat i'll repeat again say for example we have a medicinal plant right so if we want to do any structure based drug discovery kind of work or we want to identify the drug targets of the active compounds of this medicinal plants first of all we need to do the identification of the compounds through these separation techniques and detection techniques like gcms lcms hplc hptlc like that so after getting the compounds when gcms and lcms will uh, give a result which are basically iupac name or in some cases some common names will be also will also be given so those names can be searched in the phytochemical databases or chemical databases <coughs> sorry 
I am not very well, so please be here with. So we can search the same thing, the compound in PubChem compound database or a similar database that is called CHEBI database. So these two databases are one of the very beginning point for doing any kind of structure based drug discovery research. Okay, so noticed basically Assam is full of medicinal plants. There are hundreds of varieties of medicinal plants which are still to be explored. Okay. So this way we can identify and we can make a list of the compounds as well as the structures like this property and we can prepare our own data set ready for doing the analysis. Now we'll take examples of two different diseases. So how these compounds can be screened against some diseases say one plant one one uh, plant that is traditionally known that it is used for treatment of the alzheimer's disease which is a non-infectious kind of disease another one one will take which is basically active against infectious diseases bacterial infection, viral infection. In this case, I'm taking the example of COVID-19. So COVID-19 is back with JN.1 strain identified in India again, but there are mutations going on and we'll talk about that also. So how cleverly the viruses, they pass through the, this kind of uh, pathways which are targeted basically by the drug discovery researchers. So we'll take two examples. One is non-infectious disease, another one is infectious disease. Fine. So uh, suppose you want to start your research against Alzheimer's disease, which is a very common old age disorder in today's world. So we have to see the Alzheimer's disease pathogenesis first of all. Okay, the entire disease pathogenesis we have to study before going to target any protein, any enzyme as the as our drug targets. So beta amyloid production pathway, we have to see the presence of neuropathological structure, neurofibrillary targets. So this we'll discuss a little bit, not all, okay. So, and there are many epigenetic targets also available for diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Now, after knowing the pathogenesis of the disease, okay. Second part will be to identify a very important pathway of that particular organism. Say in case of Alzheimer's disease, this is ultimately the human only. We are doing for human. So we have to identify the pathway metabolic pathway, signaling pathways, reaction participants, what are the enzymes and the proteins which are participating in the disease pathogenesis, relations between genes, enzymes, and reactions. So in this case, to identify the drug targets, you know, that is a very massive and tedious work. And we will be in the safe side if we follow the peer researchers works where there are studies like gene knockout studies okay 
there are nowadays the artificial intelligence being employed for identification of the disease targets that itself is a massive massive chapter which basically identifies the actual pathway which is involved in that particular disease and in that pathway we will be targeting some enzymes some proteins as the targets of our probable drug candidates and probable drug candidates are those candidates which we have identified in the medicinal plants correct so there are so many pathway databases are available after getting the literature reviewed after getting the literature searched we have to use our intuition and brain also knowledge also to search the right pathway right enzyme that if we just i'll show you say example regulation of beta amyloid production pathway and its epigenetic alterations so in these pathways in this kind of pathways you know there are certain important enzymes okay which can be blocked if we block that enzyme suppose that beta amyloid production pathway is disturbed to understand the point say we have to identify such a target or such a protein or such an enzyme which is very very important for this particular pathway if you are targeting this beta amyloid production pathway which is associated with the alzheimer disease so we can target that particular protein we can see that involvement of that particular protein or the enzymes and we can go ahead with the rest of the procedures okay so we'll come to this epigenetic modifications little later associated with alzheimer's disease there are many epigenetic regulators available which are also being identified as successful drug targets this is the alzheimer's drug development pipeline so different enzymes amyloid beta amyloid pathway has been targeted this red uh, that rectangular shapes which were available in phase 3 some are they are in phase 3 some are they are in phase 2 some are they are in phase 1 clinical trials okay so there are sim symptom reducing small molecules disease modifying biologicals disease modifying small molecules there are three categories of medicines are being trialed against the alzheimer's disease some are they are in phase 1 trial some are they are in phase 2 trial some are they are in phase 3 trial what are these phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 we will discuss okay basically these are different phases of the clinical trials where we fix the required doses form the mode of administration of the drug etc etc so we'll come to this picture once again now uh, from all these studies pa researchers has have identified that from the terminology of the common alzheimers and related ontology resources there are some of the protein potential targets for alzheimer's disease at the early stage and late stage clinical drug development okay so amyloid is one tau protein is another apolipoprotein e apo e 
okay <coughs> sorry lipoprotein receptors neurotransmitter receptors so there are hundreds of potential targets which are already being identified by the peer researchers we don't have to work on this just we have to do the strategic literature review then after getting the name of the target say so you have fixed that we will use this pathway we will target this and this kind of enzymes then next phase is getting the structure of that particular enzyme or the proteins so this database protein data bank rcsb protein data bank can help you in getting the structures of the proteins okay so how we can get the structure of this proteins that we will see now the thing is from where we will select the probable drug candidates so probable drug candidates we will select from the plants which are used in traditional medicines against alzheimer's diseases say in those traditional medicinal books and literature we can get the many clues different different clues that this extract can be useful this of this plant that leaf boiled in water is useful so so on and so forth there are so many clues we can get from the traditional medicines so here i have put a say list of 16 different known medicinal plants which are almost known to you curcuma longa okay piper negrum okay brassica negra so these plants suppose we have identified from the traditional knowledge base now what to do next will you do gcms lcms for all these plants to get the compounds so basically which is not possible if somebody has already done already identified then why we will go for gcms lcms again so there are databases for that so definitely we will do gcms lcms for confirmation or say if no clues is a clue is available then we cannot go for a no clue is available then we can go for gcms lcms solutions but before that we have numbers of databases available now one is very important database is dr duke's phytochemical and ethnobotanical database okay so this is maintained by us department of agriculture in the official website of the united states government say we need the all entries for a particular plant plant say
very scientific name we can search here. Tulsi, holy basil. There are 29 chemicals available. Okay, there are 29 chemicals available in this particular plant. So, out of all these 29, there may not be unique compound for Tulsi. So suppose ascorbic acid, it's a very common compound, right? <coughs> there are some fats, glycosides, so which are not essential for us, which are not important for us. So how do we suppose olic acid? From this kind of database also again you are getting the names of the compounds then again you have to take the help from these databases like PubChem compound so this is the structure of that olic acid fine <coughs> So like that, we have to build up our ligand database. If the plant is not at all available in these kind of databases, then we have to do the GCMS, LCMS analysis of our own. Then rest, I have already mentioned. And there are databases like PubChem Compound. There are databases like CHEBI from where we can get the specific information about the chemical compounds which we got through the searching in Dr. Duke's database or in the other databases and if not there through GCMS LCMS analysis. So ultimately whatever it is we have to collect the structures, proper properties of the small molecules. So for doing the computer aided drug discovery, so till now what we have got is we need some small molecules may be plant origin may not be plant origin okay that is different thing but i am focusing on the plant origin small molecules so we have to combine the information of say 30 40 plants whatever is found to be active say list of the compounds available in the 16 medicinal plants so we have collected and we have listed them properly with proper property calculation and other things. Then comes, <coughs> so we'll go to another disease, but before that, before doing the actual filtration of the molecules, so we will not take each and every molecule what we get in databases or what we get in GCMS analysis. We won't require that, okay, it is not required. So we'll get some only some selected compounds. And before that, we can do a mass screening of the compounds for drug likeliness properties. So whether 
the plant compounds may also be toxic right they may have some solubility issues okay they may have some other issues which are not favorable for becoming a successful drug so those compounds we have to wash away at this stage only so unnecessarily why to take it forward for docking and other thing fine then we go for another disease so we'll come to those processes again and again okay because our aim and objective is to see the tools and techniques which are prerequisites for computer aided drug discovery that is the theme of the lecture today so but i am giving two examples that is one alzheimer's disease that is a non infectious disease this is covid 19 the infectious disease so you all know that a in pneumonia of unknown cause detected in wuhan china so first reported when so okay but the covid 19 is caused by sars cov 2 the rna virus which is a new or novel coronavirus okay so basically the controlling the viruses through vaccines through medicines it is not very useful okay it is not very useful because whenever the molecule we deploy as a drug okay the viruses are so clever that it may change their target protein structure through accumulation of mutation viruses are very fast mutating agent you all know right they can change their code protein they can change their target proteins everything they can change within very very small time so it is sometimes becomes very difficult okay to trap the viruses with some vaccines with some small molecules but there are strategies which are being followed worldwide so where multiple drug targets are targeted by single compound so in that case if one protein get mitated mutated the small molecule can bind to the other one if second one fails third one like that so in the absence of new targeted drugs and vaccines against sars cov2 at present the choices for the effective treatment are limited it was limited and it is limited so by applying the principles of computer aided drug discovery we can contribute by the following ways the screening of already available drugs used for treatment of other diseases which was done uh, many of those antibiotics were skin so you know that the rosiglitazone zone then many failed also like ranvesivir okay those are called repurposing of the drugs then another way is discover and identify new medicines from different sources like microbes plants etc etc so this is the right side panel is our focus panel for this kind of exercises so discover identify new medicines from different sources like plants microbes etc etc and most importantly why cocidity is so so popular because you don't have to come to the contact of the virus physical okay so the virus name is sars cov2 those red marked 
names are basically well recognized disease targets main protease tcl pro rdrp okay there are so many pl pro there are so many drug targets have already been identified people are working on that and this basically helps in the viral propagation so that means our aim is to limit the viral propagation through administration of the small natural compounds <coughs> so natural products through novel drug development exercises are basically used basically developed against these kind of against this kind of drug targets then the molecule natural molecule binds to that say main protease it can block their activity and it can limit it can seize a particular pathway or a particular metabolic pathway okay so which will lead to the controlling of the viral propagation and as i have mentioned that viruses are very very clever agents they can sense the target proteins say you have designed a drug against screened a drug against pl pro or 3 cl pro by the time you administer the drug it senses its drug protein the active site where it was intended to bind has been changed how by mutations accumulation of the mutations but still if we take two three protein targets at a time against which we administer a small molecule which can bind to all the three agents three drug targets then the success ratio of this drug discovery progress becomes manifold <clears throat> now come to the main part so what are the steps in computer aided drug discovery or cdd so as i have told target identification what is the target again i am repeating the target is the protein or the enzyme or some dna molecule which are available either in the person pathogen or in some of the targeted host organism then we do the structure based drug designing and ligand based drug designing there are two different ways in a ligand based drug designing during the qsar and ligand structure information is being ligand has been designed against the active site and qsar quantitative structure activity relationship and qspr these techniques are applied for designing a proper molecule which can fit to the active site of a protein target now what is happening in this process ai has been applied artificial intelligence is applied so you give the properties that i need some compounds with this 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 properties this site group that site chain etc etc the ai the generative ai actually can increase the probability of designing a better drug candidate increases the probability increases with the application of the <coughs> new techniques like generative ai okay 
So that is ligand based. So we are not talking today about the ligand based drug discovery program, but we are talking about the computer aided drug discovery program where we need the target structure. Again, I'm repeating what is the target? Target is the simply at this moment we consider that it is an enzyme, a protein, right? Which is important for disease pathogenesis. Then we do the ligand docking, ligand docking. So from where the ligands will come? Maybe from the databases like parkem compound and other thing. Maybe from the plant sources. Maybe from the bacterial sources. Okay. We have to build up a big library of probable compounds which can bind against a particular target or two, three targets which are selected against a particular disease. Then what we will do the, in the process of ligand docking, what we will do, we do basically, just I'll show you. Again, I'll come back. We try to fit, this is the active site. This is the active site of the, protein target. This is the ligand. Okay. You see how beautifully it is binded to the protein target more specifically to the active site. <coughs> See how the structure will bind, how the compound will bind. the conformation, right conformation, right molecule in the right side. So if we want to try to do it, do the fitting computationally, that is basically called the docking. Means you have thousands of keys and you have one lock. Now you have to search for the molecule, that means the key, which can unlock the receptor protein or the active site. You understand? Now, there will be many keys which will open the key, open the lock, but not in a very efficient manner. You have to do very uh, hit and dry to do the opening of the lock. Okay. But there will be a few keys, one, two, three keys which will very swiftly open the lock. You select those things. And that is called selection of the ligands. From the ligands, those process through which we have selected the three, four compounds, which are, which can be termed as the selected ligands or the lead, lead molecules. That process is known as the computational docking. Okay. So after docking, say one particular compound is binding to the other particular compound, that the protein target in the active site, one small molecule is binding. Whether the binding is proper, properly being done, whether the binding will be remaining intact in that portion, that is basically signified, proved by a process called molecular dynamics. 
so we can do molecular dynamic simulations using very famous software like Desmon of Schrodinger, Chromex, right? There are ways through which we can predict, okay, this is bind to this target, but how good is the binding? Okay, those things we have to see. Then we have to do the lead optimization. And suppose 10 compounds we have selected or five compounds we have selected from the, the thousands of keys. Now all may not have, all may not have the right nature or right properties to become a successful drug. We have to do the admit tox calculations again. Absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion and toxicity, ADMET. Then we can do the lead optimization. We can change the solubility pattern and other things. Now it is in the lead optimization process, the generative AI is again being applied and we can finally do the identify that this ABC, these are the three probable molecules. We can say probable only through computer as we are doing <coughs> computationally. We can just term it as probable. This is the probability. This can bind to this uh, target protein of SARS-CoV-2 and may lead to controlling the growth or propagation of the virus. So that is the, in a nutshell, that is the story. So if you have any question, please unmute yourself and raise the question. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Anyone have any queries? Okay. <clears throat> so again, I'm uh, repeating the steps in computer aided drug discovery. So one side that is selection of the drug targets. From how we select the drug targets, mostly depending on the previous literature. So at this moment, at our organizations, if some of you may have the facility for drug target identification studies, but if we think for a total computational work, then we have to depend on the previous literature. Then get the structures from the drug targets from RCSB protein database. Then prepare the protein structure for docking using the software like say a chimera or other thing. That means this is part, uh, left part is the for protein and right part is the for small molecules. So selection of the small molecules for screening. These are the small molecules say ready for screening against a SARS-CoV-2 viral protein. Fine. Now, what you need, <coughs> I'm sorry, what you need at this moment, you need the three-dimensional structure of the protein as well as three-dimensional structure of each and every ligand. So who, who are the ligands? Where, is, where are the ligands? These are the ligands. And this is the protein target. This is the target protein. So one small molecule, one protein matching. Matching hoga ki nahi hoga, whether it will fit or not in the active site. If it is fitting, how, in what degree it is fitting? What is the docking score? What is the energy, total energy of the 
<coughs> protein ligand complexes. These are being calculated in the process called docking. So when there are thousands, millions, 10 millions, 20 millions compounds are available for screening against a particular drug target, then the normal computation is not going to help you. So in that case, nowadays we are using the HPCs, high performance computing system, with some software based quantum simulator. So you will know that one another generation is computer is evolving very fast. There is quantum computing which will take over all the computation calculations in near future. So quantum computing that hardware we may not use, but there are some software which can increase the power of your desktop, power of your laptop, power of your GPU enabled HPCs. So these are basically when we do in a massive high scale calculations, massive data. This is already a big data analytics, right? So this massive say, stay a massive <coughs> compound library that small molecules. These are one after another. This is being screened against a protein target. This is basically also referred to as if the data is very huge, there is high throughput screening. Okay. So high throughput screening and then extra precision docking also we can do for precise selection of the small molecule which will be better fitting to our proteins. But the prerequisite is, I am telling repeatedly, repeatedly, the prerequisite is you identify the protein target properly, you identify the small molecule compounds from where you will take, you will take the database compounds, you will take some plants, okay? Then the protein compound, protein as well as the compound, the small molecule, protein and a small molecule both need to be there in their 3D structures. Three dimensional structure will be required for both protein and the <coughs> ligands. So, in case of the SARS CoV 2, again I am coming back to that. The following are other potential drug targets being used commonly by the researchers throughout the world. One is main protease, there is 3CL2, RD2, RDRP, <coughs> 2 prime O ribose, methyl transferase, so, so on and so forth. They are how the drug targets are determined that I have already mentioned that it is through literature survey we have to do or otherwise we have to work in the weight lab to identify the drug targets by mutating the genes or gene knockout studies and there are so many molecular biological experiments through which <coughs> we can identify the targets for a particular disease so what information is required to be available to select a protein drug target for the study sequence of the protein will be required if not the structure structure of the protein from protein data bank. If it is not available in the protein structure database, then we can take the help of that Google's DeepMind alpha phone. Okay, it's a AI generated, AI generated protein structure database, which can be very confidently used for getting the structures of those protein for which the structures are not available in protein data bank. Most of the structures you will get in protein data bank, but for many of the structures you may not get the structure. So in that case, we have to do the homology modeling. But nowadays we don't have to go for homology modeling. Why? Because the Google's DeepMind, you know, DeepMind, <clears throat> ok, 
okay google's deep mind has developed one ai based technique ai based homology modeling system which is known as alpha fold which has solved almost entirely all the protein structures that means homology modeling is almost not required nowadays so if you do not get in protein data bank then we can go for searching the <coughs> databases like uh, google alpha fold alpha fold databases okay so this is the protein data bank so how to download the protein data bank structures just i'll quickly i'll show you i'll give one assignment <coughs> to do during the practical classes which will be guided by the respective faculty members from uh, organizing institute so but quickly i want to so how to get the structures from protein data bank any protein the url is rcsb.org so any protein name suppose human hemoglobin you want to download 1a 00 is the <coughs> okay so before downloading the files you have got lot of options lot of file options to download so we have to download a simple software called resmol we'll start with resmol or reswin okay so this is a three dimensional structure visualizer so the structure files which are available in the pdb format i have downloaded this is open you can see <clears throat> so there are four chains in this hemoglobin molecule so this is one you can visualize you can see how many alpha helices are there and this this that then another one is chimera okay this is little bit higher high end software <clears throat> So this is the structure here it is little bit more beautiful you can color the scenes can see <clears throat> the hydrogen bonds can you see this red marks small red bones these are hydrogen bonds you can see where the hydrogen bonds are there and how the 
hydrogen bonds are keeping the structures intact. So these are some of the examples of some of the visualizers. This is another one visualizer. You can open the structure. This is another one. You can see the ham groups inside. Okay, so you can <coughs> see the interactions. Okay, there are four ligands. So anyway, you can see the interactions also. <coughs> so that way we can download the structures from the protein data bank and all and keep the structures ready. So before doing the docking, <coughs> we have to process the structures. Process means, say this one all, all, only will download 6WNP. This is called PDBID, right? Six W N P. So before doing the docking, any bounded ligand to be deleted. Any solvent to be deleted. There are tools for preparing the structures like for docking preparation that is known as dock prep module delete solvent add charge other things so this how this is an important step before going for <coughs> docking we have to do this and secondly a small molecule from the plants. So what plants to be used where we will get the molecules that will already I have mentioned that we have to take help from the traditional medicine or any traditional use, Ayurvedic use, whatever. These are some of the examples of the plants which, which are being used against the SARS-CoV-2 viral proteins. So again, you have to select the structures from the popchem compound. We can, uh, we have to make the three dimensional structure of the ligands also. As already I have shown, the three dimensional structure of the protein we have downloaded from the protein data bank. Then, on the other hand, we need the three dimensional structure of each and every ligand which we want to talk with the protein. Protein is ready, as I have shown to you. Now, a small molecule you have to prepare. Small molecule, <coughs> that I, I have told. That. So if we can use the online tools, like one is Corina is there. This software can be used. Or simply, this camera can be used for building the molecule, three dimensional structure of the molecule.
these are examples of the small molecule three D structures. Okay, from the plants, from popcorn compound, then we design through those Corina and other software, then Chimera, then finally we get three D structures like this. Okay. So this 3D structure and the other 3D structure of the protein is required to get the calculations done, whether it will bind or not, this molecule will go into the active site or not. Okay. So ultimately, <coughs> after docking, you get a result like this. is the ligand. Can you see? After docking, this one, right? This is a small molecule, this is the protein. Then we can see the interaction diagram also. Which amino acid <coughs> is the hyacinth bones? This is being created by the ligand and it is binding to the nearby amino acids. So, there is a rule called Lipinski rule of five, which we have to obey during the selection of the binded ligands. So, if we do it for say hundreds of thousands of molecules, there will be a score. Means to get the receptor ligand after receptor ligand docking, there will be the docking score which will tell you that which compound, which small molecule is binding <coughs> more favorably to the protein. To select the base binding ligands using Lipinski rule of five. There is a drug discovery rule. Not only Lipinski rule of five, there are course rule and other other rules are available, which can be applied for selecting out the actual drug-like compound. Then perform admitox and drug-like clinical studies of the sort-listed molecules. Then we can propose that this molecule can bind to this target up to this level okay that is not confirmatory we cannot say that it is a we have identified a drug but we have identified a lead molecule which can be developed into a full-fledged drug in due course of time with due proper weight lab validation okay <clears throat> so this is the Summary of the experimental strategy, selection of the crystal structure of the target proteins from RCSB protein database. Processing of the crystal structure of the target protein. How you process? We process it in Chimera or some other software. Then processing of the plant-based small molecules. Then molecular docking. Then molecular dynamic simulation. Why we do the docking? To select out the Best possible binded ligand with the receptor protein. Why we do the molecular dynamic simulation? After a small molecule binds to a protein molecule, whether the binding will be stable or not. How many times? Okay. 
how many uh, till how many nanosecond it keeps on binding and etc we have to do that pharmacokinetic analysis we have to do the those analysis that whether the compound will be drug like or not so qsr is another option where we can modify the molecules in more details see how in the active site <coughs> the small molecule is binding processing of the small molecules then docking after docking already i have shown this process this molecule has to be fixed in certain positions is the spike protein of the virus this is the molecular dynamic simulation of the molecules atoms which are available in the molecules to uh denote that what exactly the binding says or binding whether it will remain or not <clears throat> quantum mechanical models so these are little bit more into the physical chemistry side so definitely we'll see but we uh, as per the requirement of the works we can just confine to the preparation of the <coughs> small molecule and the proteins and up to certain docking exercise <coughs> So biological data is already a big data. So big data analytics tool out there for data analytics today. Platforms like Nine is available. Those who are uh, working in this area can try using this uh, platforms. <coughs> And blockchain is also being used nowadays to keep the laser, the distributed laser technology. in blockchain once a data is written that cannot be modified or so potential use cases in r&d so that we will see and i'll uh, yes <coughs> cloud infrastructure we can use suppose say at your college or at your uh, university you don't have the facility of high performance computing say what you want to do uh, one experiment so for a specific time say two days one day five hours five minutes five hours <coughs> one hour so we can take some very high performing computing system hired in aws amazon web services or microsoft azure google cloud these are available so we can pay but we have to be very careful while using these clouds because if we don't don't know and the equip the machines running for longer time so huge amount of bill will come at the end of the month hmm. so that's all uh, from uh, my side in the theoretical part i'll give one uh, structured uh, part by part to do uh, work so which can be uh, held by um, the experts in the biotech hub bahana college because i have some preoccupation as i have already mentioned in the second half so it will be uh, very nice if you can interact so i could not deliver very uh, properly because i am not very well today but whatever 
I'll say that many of you can start working, although not individually, you can collaborate with, with each other. The colleges, the universities, they are coming up with good uh, cross-platform uh, programs in NEP. So take the advantage of that and use the facilities given by those uh, high performance computing uh, systems of the IITs and other good institutions and you can do the work uh, even though you don't have the setup okay so thank you so much thank you so much Professor Abhanjas sir thank you it was a very nice and very informative session i hope the participants have uh, also come to know a lot about molecular locking proteins assay and so on uh, so i'd like to request the participants that this session is open for discussion as our esteemed person will not be available in the second session so if you have any query regarding whatever we have shown us in this first session you can please unmute yourself and you can ask Or you can put uh, the questions in the, in the Google, uh, that uh, WhatsApp group also, if it is not uh, coming at this moment to your mind. So that I mean, I am there and available in the WhatsApp group also. Okay, I'll be sharing the assignment and the files uh, through that WhatsApp group only. Okay. So we have created one uh, Google Classroom for uh, uh, submission of this assignment and all because yesterday also Dr. Pankaj Sidhya sir we have given an assignment. So uh, dear participants, we will uh, those who have registered uh, through your registered email ID, we will send uh, the Google Classroom code. Please join the Google Classroom and we will upload all the assignments and uh, you try to do it from your end. And if we uh, might in the process, if there comes any query, you can put it straight in our WhatsApp uh, group itself, and also through mail also, because our resource persons are available in that WhatsApp group as well. So that is uh, what we wanted to share with you from our end. So now it's your time. If you have any query, please put it. Uh, put it. Uh, you can also put it in the, in the chat box. Thank you. Okay, if uh, no question is available at this moment, we can end the session, right? So, yes, thank yeah, you, I once again thank the team of Dr. Sangeeta Das, coordinator of the Biotech Hub, Bahala College, and all other associated faculty members and students, and especially to the participants from different parts of the country who has uh, joined the program. So, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sir, so much. Now I like to uh, end the meeting with a uh, formal vote of thanks, and I request Miss Molika Bora to uh, deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Zakaria. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the time you Maybe we can answer that first. Yeah. From Rahul Lodha, he has asked one question. How cameras and yeah. autodocs yes. use effective? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, without camera and autodocs, and MSR drug discovery work, means without using, if you do not want to use any commercial software, okay, this camera and autodoc is the only thing which we can use uh, very confidently. So in the chimera, basically, we have to prepare the protein structure as well as the small molecule structure. And in the autodoc, autodoc can be used in the Linux environment. If you are not familiar with Linux environment, you can use uh, some <coughs> uh, pipelines like Pyrex, P-Y-R-Y-X, Pyrex. That is available for Windows also. So you can use the Pyrex and use the Autodoc and the Autodoc Vina. It's very simple. So you can try 
uh, learning the autodoc and autodoc pina by seeing the different uh, youtube videos and tutorials it's not very difficult and both of them are uh, free software so you don't have to pay anything just try it out once if you have any issues you can contact us thank you sir Thank you. 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 Thank you.